get by It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a beach If you find the same like right now I feel like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise all right. Welcome, everybody. John Corcoran here. I am the host of the Smart Business Revolution podcast, and this is a live episode. I'm here with Dr. Weiss. How you doing, Dr. Weiss? Thanks for having me. And this will also go live or will go as a recording on the Inspired Insider podcast, so you may be listening to it there as well. And, you know, on my show, it's, it's such a great privilege to talk to great CEOs, founders, and entrepreneurs of all kinds of different companies I've had. You know, we interviewed recently the uh, founder of Kinkos, we have Netflix, we have YPO, EO Activation, Blizzard, Lending Tree, Open Table, many more. Jeremy, who have you had? You've had a few, few phenomenal guests. Yeah, P90X, Atari. I just had the co-founder of Pixar on. That was Amazing. awesome. So yeah, the so go check of, it out. You know, Steve. You know, talking about Steve Jobs and George Lucas and just some amazing stories. Go to Inspired Insider, subscribe in your favorite podcasting app if you are listening to this on Smart Business Revolution, and vice versa. So we are here today and we're going to be talking about thought leadership episodes, which is uh, very meta because that's what we're talking about, what we're doing here today. So a thought leadership episode is a style of content that you put out on your podcast, which is sharing your own wisdom. So as opposed to sharing someone else's wisdom, someone comes on sharing your own wisdom, because what we say to our clients all the time is you have a phenomenal amount of experience and wisdom in your brain, and you should share it, and you should share it with your own audience. And um, so we're going to be talking about the different types of thought leadership episodes that you should be creating. Of course, this episode is brought to you by Rise25 Media, where we help B2B businesses to get clients, referrals, and strategic partnerships with Done For You podcasts and content marketing. And if you've ever been curious about starting a podcast, whether it's the right thing for you, Jeremy and I have been doing it for about 24 years between the two of us. And I tell everyone I meet that you should start a podcast because it will bring, if you do it right, it will bring tremendous value to your life. You will build better relationships, meet amazing people and up level your life. And so I tell everyone that they should do it and we encourage everyone to do it. Um, so let's launch into it, Jeremy. So thought types of thought leaders. Yeah. So first of all, you know, I, I gave a brief people, introduction. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I want to give a, just a quick background we did another episode called the five different types of episodes you should be creating with your content and your podcast and one of those types is the thought leadership episodes which we're going to break down even further today exactly so um that's a good background on this so this is one type of podcast interview which we encourage people um to create and um first of all i guess it's worth saying that there are some people who who approach podcasts differently and they think that they are going to create only episodes where they're talking into a microphone they're sharing their wisdom and the challenge with that is it's very boring it's very isolating and i have not seen many podcasts in that format succeed over the years they tend to go for a little bit six months or so if if that and then they end up giving it up because it's just not fun to do in addition to the fact that you're missing out on the advantages of uploading your network having said that it is great to do some portion of your episodes using thought leadership so let's talk about jeremy what styles or what types of thought leadership episodes should people be thinking about creating yeah, we'll break down a number of different types of thought leadership episodes. What we end up talking about first is, you know, kind of a little bit of more about the origin story, right? So why you started your, again, when we're talking about podcasts, we're talking about B2B podcasts, not, you know, a crime, you know, law and order podcast or something like that. True crime. So, true crime. Exactly. Um, but so the origin of why you started the company, how you came up with the idea, there's a bunch of origin stories and which, you know, brings people up to speed about your background and some interesting things in evolution of the company and services and what you do. Yeah. Um, and a couple other ones, you know, talking about a mentor, talking about the secret sauce behind your company, what inspired you maybe, you know, in many cases, you can create a, a great conversation around just one of these things, talking about a mentor that you had as a kid or in college 
or in high school, they took you under your wing and the lessons that you learned, you know, some people have amazing wisdom that you can spin out just from that one individual topic. Um, another one that's really good, Jeremy, is it a teardown episode? So that's where yeah. you, you know, you, let's say your expertise is in SEO or designing websites or business coaching or something like that. And you will, in exchange for um, someone's consent for you to share it as an episode, as content, you will give someone free feedback, free advice, um, or free coaching or consulting of some sort, and share that as, as an episode on your podcast. Yeah, I want to back up to the the other ones. You know, as far as an example goes, yeah, I was interviewing someone the other day, and like they they could have done this themselves if they had a podcast and they wanted to do a thought leadership, which is they used to work at Google, and so they worked at Google for a couple years, and we talked about how, um, you know, the founders of Google would give an all hands meeting every you know, every week to whatever, 50,000 people. Um, and what he learned leadership from working at Google, what he learned culture working at Google and what he learned, you know, obviously he did, you know, SEO and other things. So it gives him credibility of why should I use you and your company? Because he worked at, you know, he learned from the best, right? So talking about your past and your origin, like how does that relate to what I do now? Well, it gives you all the credibility in the world to show what your background is, right? So there's a lot of different great stories from that. So on the, on the teardown, this is an amazing uh, type of episode, which is a, we call it like an audit or a teardown episode. And you can do this for someone like actually, um, you could do this for someone you know. You could do it for someone you don't know. You could do it for someone that you uh, you say, "Hey, submit your website, and I'm going to do a teardown." Or, you know, I was talking to someone who is in the wine industry, and I was saying, you know, you could pull up the bottle, the label, whatever type you are in the wine industry, and actually do a teardown. I mean, early on, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk did Wine Library TV, and he basically was kind of doing a tear. He'd pull the wine, he'd pour it he'd drink it and he would critique it. Right. Yeah. And, um, that's what he would do. And he'd do different, um, uh, different wines, but you could do that. If you were an SEO, I did this with someone, John, on my website or on my interview. Um, now he could have did it himself again, if he had a podcast, but this person was a LinkedIn, um, paid LinkedIn expert. So he focused on, you know, running LinkedIn ads for people. So I just thought it'd be fun in the interview to pull up LinkedIn live link LinkedIn itself, not LinkedIn live. We're on LinkedIn live, but LinkedIn itself, go through the feed, pull and like go through the ads that come up in the feed and critique them mm -hmm. because I thought it'd be interesting for the audience. And the funny thing is, um, we pulled up, I think three or four, um, on the episode along with talking about his company. And I happened to know two of the people in the feed. Like mm -hmm. I just, Oh, I know these people. So what I did was I, after the interview, after even not even after the interview went live before it went live, after the interview, I emailed both those people. I go, By the way, we did a teardown of your LinkedIn ad live on the interview. <laughs> and so be on the lookout for, that episode. And obviously you get into a dialogue with the person, but after it went live, they watched it and they ended up, one of those people ended up hiring this person to do their LinkedIn ads. <laughs> yep. I mean, yeah. I get nothing for that. I just thought it'd be an interesting episode, but if they actually did it themselves, they could probably reach out, give people great feedback that's useful to them. And they could decide, they could see, wow, this person really knows what they're doing. I should use this person and, or, not use it, but either way, they gave value to that person, not really asking for anything in return. Yeah. And so a, an important point is you can do this either with the person's cooperation and assistance and live there, or you can do it for a company that you, you don't even know, perhaps. So in, in that case, I had a client, or a guest who was on my podcast a while back who the funny thing was he had done a podcast for a period of time, but had wasn't doing it currently. And this so frequently happens with people where I go and I ask them about it. Like, how was the podcast? Sometimes, you know, they, they did some things wrong and they didn't get good results for a minute, but sometimes they're like, you know, when I think about it, actually, I got this great client from it. And I'm like, why are you not still doing it? And this particular person 
they they did kind of like a teardown format where they gave advice to different large tech companies and they actually ended up landing Microsoft as a client because they did an episode where they just addressed and said how Microsoft could overcome a particular challenge. And they did a whole episode where they went through and gave their wisdom freely of how they would do it. And Microsoft ended up hiring them to help them with that particular challenge because they, you know, shared it after the fact with them. So you can do, you can do it either way. You can do it where, you know, you ask them in advance, they come, they participate. Um, and in certain types of professions, you would need that assistance, but in others, you, maybe you don't, you can just do it without, yeah. without that. And I want to say caveat, like we're talking, you know, I was talking about LinkedIn where I had the guest on, but uh, thought leadership is you're just doing it without a guest at all. So if, if I were this person, I would probably do a bunch of episodes, just pulling up the feed in LinkedIn and doing a tear, a breakdown of some of the ads. Um, another example was I had, um, the CEO of site tuners on my podcast and which is a conversion optimization company. And, um, he tore down my web, our website, right? And also, um, he, I had him bring up other websites to tear down. So if I had a, if I was a like a conversion rate optimization or website person, I would be pulling up websites all day long on my episodes and going, "Here's what I like. Here's some Definitely. things to improve on," and it's just just delivering a lot of value. And I mean, if he did that for us, which he did on the call, um, I would definitely watch it and see what advice he had. You know, so yeah, yeah, definitely. What about um, FAQ style episodes, yeah. Jeremy? Yeah, so we talked about kind of origin, which are there's a bunch of different questions on the origin category. We talked about the teardown, um, and then FAQs. So, like, so FAQs, we look at ways to you know when you have an external guest, you build this amazing relationship. When you having doing a thought leadership episode with you or your internal team how do you save your team time? So you're demonstrating your expertise, but FAQ should save you and your team time. Like John, that's one of the reasons, like you said, it's very meta. One of the reasons we're creating this episode and other episodes, because we get these questions over and over and over every single week. So instead of spending 20 minutes explaining it to 10 different people that week, we could go, hey, here's a short answer. Here's the full episode. Um, where we talk about the types of thought leadership episodes you should be creating, the five types of episodes in general you should be creating. So it is designed to save you and your team time. So if you think about what are the biggest questions you get um, from clients, potential clients, it could be anyone. Um, you can create episodes around that. Um, and then there's other ones where you can talk about um, misconceptions. Um mm -hmm as well um and mistakes which kind of feed into faqs i was talking to someone the other day and there's like i don't know people don't really understand you know they hire us branding versus design we do this whole branding thing and then people show up they just want like the design of this thing we really do the whole branding and that's just like the, the design is one part of the branding and I go, well, you should do an episode about what is the difference between branding and design because they end up explaining it over and over again, right? So yeah. that would be and, an example. And and with that, the way that I explain it to people a lot of times is imagine it's Saturday night, it's a 1030 and you're checking your work email. Maybe you shouldn't be, but you do anyways. And you see an email that comes in and it's someone saying, hey, I would love to talk to you about your services. But it turns out you're fully booked Sunday, Monday, you can't talk until like Tuesday afternoon. Well, you can set a time for that appointment, but you can also send them some resources in the meantime, say, check out this resource, check out this resource, and then they'll go consume it. It's not viewed as marketing. It's not like a pamphlet or something. They're like, ah, I'm not going to read that. People are more likely to consume it. And then they're going to be so much more warm when they talk to you because they've learned about your knowledge and wisdom. So I hear that all the time when I talk to people and they've listened to a bunch of our episodes that they're, they're really a lot further along in the buying process. What about case study types of episodes, Jeremy, and how you distinguish that from actually interviewing a client, how a case study episode, thought leadership episode is Yeah, different? that's a great question. So another amazing one is case study. Now you, with case studies, you can have your clients on the podcast, which we do all the time to talk about their services, highlighting what they do. But of course, you know, they're going to say, oh yeah, I love 
John and Jer hopefully. I love John and Jeremy and what Rise 25 does. And you talk a little bit about their experience, but it's going to be focused on a couple things. So you can also do a case study interview as a, as a thought leadership, meaning you say, um, in, in the biggest, I guess I have to say the biggest objection, John, I get with this is, well, I can't mention their name. I can't mention the company name. I can't mention the person's name. You don't need to. You could say, listen, there was this company in the manufacturing space. There's lots of companies in the manufacturing space. So you don't have to specifically, if you don't, you can always ask for approval. Can I use your name on the episode and, and some of the stuff that we did together? But if you don't, just make it general and go in the health, I had this company that I worked with in the health space and you walk through the journey. Um, you walk through the journey. You know, I know, John, when we're doing when we have clients, we do the thought leadership episodes with our clients. So we actually, our team will interview them for this episode. So it's, it's, even though it's a thought leadership, we're the guest um, right. interviewer for that. So it helps right. them. Which can work, which the reason we do that is because it's far more likely to get done. You know, people are busy and it's, it's far more likely to be done with us. Right. And that's why we're doing this right now, talking to one another, because it's a lot more interesting and fun than, you know, just having a solo person talking to a microphone. And I think more interesting for the listener too, as well. We're almost out of time, but um, let's talk about the give loop, the give loop strategy, Jeremy, and how that works. Yeah. So quickly, um, just to reiterate the origin, right? The origin uh, questions, the FAQs, the case studies, the tear down, um, and then the give loop. Um, really quickly in the case studies, you can also, since you're doing it, um, there's different questions you could ask under the case studies that walk someone through that customer journey from the beginning to end. Um, and so the last one is the give loop. And this is our favorite, uh, one of our favorites ones. Uh, it may be my favorite one personally, but the give loop is where you can incorporate a lot of different companies and people into an episode, um, thought leaders in the space. We've seen these, John. I mean, you've written some of these um, for Forbes and Inc, you know, the top 25 most influential connected people or something, right? So mm -hmm. you've done these in his articles and we see them all over top 30 under 30, top 40 under 40, top 42 under 42. I don't even, there's probably a million out there, but how do you create a list of the top influencers, people, whatever category that looks like? So an example would be, let's say I am a, uh, paid ad expert for B2B SaaS companies. I would probably say, here are the top B2B SaaS tools that I use, that my clients use, uh, the top 30 B2B SaaS tools out there. Mm -hmm. All of those are potential clients, but it's also great um, knowledge for the industry. And everyone wants to be on a top um, 25 or 30 list. And I, I'd love for you to tell the story of, I think, one of the people that you did this with even included in their email. I don't know if you want to talk about that. Yeah. One, one of the articles that I wrote like this um, was when I was writing for Forbes, I, I did a list like that top 25. Um, and for years, some of the people afterwards would have it in their email signature. They had it in their, you know, LinkedIn uh, profile because people love to be included in those types of lists, but you know, you don't have to write for Forbes in order to do that. You can do it on your own. Um, you can create content in a variety of different ways. We're, we're big proponents of doing it in a podcast because it's so easy and fast to do. It's easier to talk out your content than to write a long article. That thing took me a lot of time to write. And um, so we're big proponents of that. Um, <clears throat> any final thoughts on this, Jeremy? Any final thoughts on thought leadership episodes before we wrap things up? No, I think, um, you know, the biggest thing is to just you know, think about not just, you know, people kind of think about different ends of the spectrum when this comes, like people default to doing all interviews or sometimes they default to doing all thought leadership episodes. So a good mix is good, but you definitely want to make sure that you're including this. And I'm just going to bring up, I don't know if you can see my screen or if you could bring up my screen for a second. Um, I'm going to show something really quickly. Um, yeah. Oh, that's not it. I think you have to click on, click on that tab for a second. Oh, got it. But, um, go. Yeah. And so I just want to show like, it's an, like you said, deploying these assets, right? Um, you're, it's 10 o'clock or you don't have time, you know, 
each of these episodes that we do is lives as a separate blog post. It's written up. It's got video component. It's got audio component. It's going on all the podcast channels and gets repurposed into all of these different places. And you can see we mention some of our friends and other people in these episodes. You can still include other people, just they're not there, right? So you can see we've linked to Ian Garlic and Steve Simons and some other ones. So this creates a really amazing asset that you can use to educate, to produce thought leadership, to you know be the expert. Excellent. All right, Jeremy, where can people go to learn more about Rise 25 and the work that we do? Yeah, they can go to rise25.com, check out uh, videos, go to our about page. Um, and they can obviously check out inspiredinsider.com and Smart Business Revolution where, where all of this content is going out and we're sharing some of our best strategies and tips. Ex excellent. All right. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, everyone. Have a great week. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand.